Hi guys, you're welcome to the SaaS Crash Course, a comprehensive course designed to empower you with the knowledge and expertise needed to harness the full potential of SCSS in your, full, in your web development projects. SaaS is a powerful preprocessor that takes your CSS skills to the next level, offering enhanced organization, reusability, and maintainability. In today's fast-paced web development landscape, it's essential to stay ahead of the course and mastering SaaS is a valuable skill that can set you apart from the crowd. Whether you're a beginner looking to dive into the world of SaaS or an experienced developer aiming to sharpen your skills, this course is tailored to meet your needs. This course will feature installation, variables, nesting, import, mixing, and extend. Whether you are a web developer, designer, or anyone interested in improving their front-end development skills, this course is your gateway to unlocking the full potential of SCSS. Get ready to transform your web development projects, enhance your skills, and stand out in the competitive world of web development. Are you ready to embark on this exciting journey to master SaaS? Subscribe to the channel and let's dive in. Like I said earlier, SAS is a CSS preprocessor. It drastically reduces repetition of CSS and therefore saves time. It's compatible with all versions of CSS, even though at the time of recording this video, the latest version is CSS3. It is free to use, so you can just download it online and you use it. Before moving on, you need to understand HTML and CSS, both of which we have courses on the channel. So currently, this is the HTML course that we have. And this is the CSS course over here. I've opened them already. This is the HTML course. So this is all we covered in the HTML. Then we have the CSS course as well. So I think I uploaded it just today. Um, today is, um, yeah, I'm recording on the 4th of September. September. So you can see what was covered in the CSS course. So you can just take a glance. You need to understand HTML and CSS before you'll be able to um, get a hold of SCSS. So you can also check the description below for the links to those courses. You can also search the channel. You can you will find them obviously. So as style sheets grow in size and complexity, the challenge of maintaining them becomes increasingly daunting. This is precisely where the utility of a CSS preprocessor comes in. So SAS introduces a wide range of features that extend beyond the capabilities of traditional CSS. So these features include variables, nested rules, mixings, imports, inheritance, built-in functions, and so many other powerful tools and functionalities. However, it's important to note that web browsers cannot interpret SAS code directly. Very important. The web browser like Google Chrome that we have over here doesn't understand SAS as a language. What he understands is CSS. So to bridge this gap, you need a SAS preprocessor or a SAS compiler to convert your SAS code into standard CSS. So this conversion process is known as transpiling. In, as, in essence, transpiling involves taking your source code written in one language, in this case SAS, and using a transpiler, which is essentially a program that converts it to another language, which is CSS. So how do you install SAS and make use of it? I'm going to be using VS Code for this tutorial. So if you come to Google, this is the SAS compiler that we are going to be using. It's an extension for VS Code. So if you're working on a framework like um, React or AngularJS, there might be particular ways to install SCSS or SAS on that particular framework. But I've used, I've used it in React before, so I know there is a package, there is a module you have to install. It reads your CSS directly into the document. But in this case, I'm going to be using a live SAS compiler. Uh, live SAS compiler, rather. It's an extension for VS Code. So for you to get this live SAS compiler, you can just come to Google, then search for live SAS compiler by Mac. Glenn. Okay, so this is the live source compiler over here. This first one is probably what you want to 
So you can see this is the life size compiler over here. So just um, for you to install it in VS Code, just come to life size com This is my VS Code open. So come to the extensions. So look for SAS. Um, this is life SAS compi compiler. This is the one you are looking for over here. Life SAS compiler. So when you have it installed, it will detect any SAS file that you create. So how do you link the CSS together with your HTML document? So let me quickly show you how you do that. Come here, create a file, say main.html. Okay, so we want to create the SAS file now. You can do something like main.scss. Don't forget that traditionally, what the um what the browser understands is CSS. So I can bring up my HTML structure, HTML5. So this is my HTML structure. If I want to link the CSS normally, I'm going to be having something like main dot um, no, it should be link rather. So CSS. Okay, very good. So what I'll be having is um main dot css so if i should come here and i save this but you can see that main dot css it doesn't exist anywhere so but if you look at what i have here main dot scss it is this main dot scss that is going to generate the main dot css file how will it do that so open this main dot scss now if you have the live sas uh, compiler extension installed it, you, will, you will see this watch SAS um, command over here, this this uh, option over here. So if you click on watch SAS, it will open a console for you where you can watch, where it will detect the SAS file that I have over here. Every time you create a SAS command, it will compile it. For example, you can do something like body, then background, no, background color, do something like aqua. If I should save, you can see that it has generated, you can see what it generated for me here. It generated the main.css in and the main.css.map file. So the one that you are interested in is this main.css file. If you open it, you can see that it has generated the CSS already. So if I want to do something like, um, if I want to do like the universal selector, then I do something like margin of zero, then padding of zero then box sizing of border box if i should save this you can see that it has it has generated the uh, main.css file if i open it again you can see that the css is there you can see that the css is there so with the use of this live sas compiler you can easily work with your sas in uh, as an extension for vs code so let me come to the html file then let me open my go live so this go live extension it's an extension with which you, you, you can run your html files on your web browser so every time you make, you commit a change in vs code you don't have to reload it in the web browser it will reload it automatically for you it will open this it will serve your html document over a server so every time you make changes for example when i say h1 this is the first element. If I should save this, if I come to the web browser, you can see this is the first element. I didn't have to reload anything here. It reloaded it, it automatically. So it's a, an extension for VS Code. So just come here, look for go live. So go live. Uh, I think it's live server, yes. It should be live server. Yes, this one over here. This is the live server. So look for this live server and install it. So going back. Okay. So normally what I like to do is to reduce this. Then I will open my SCSS file on half of the screen. I'll close this one. So I'll write my SCSS here. Then my, my HTML will be here. It makes development way easier. So for this H1 that I have over here, can just come here and do h1 then color of red if i save this it automatically generates the css file for me 
this CSS file that I have over you can see the CSS file so that is how you install that is how you install SCSS so um, and if I go to the web browser you can see it is it has affected my my um, the property and the value that I added for each one but I wrote everything inside the SCSS file So we move on to comments. Every programming language I teach, um, the first thing I like to teach is comments. So comments is what you use to label your code basically. And in SCSS, SCSS supports two types of comments. You can use this one, um, the double backward slash, then you can write your comments. For example, um, let me do something like, this is the body styling body elements so you can write your comment there if i save this it will not affect my css file and if you come here you can see that the comment that i wrote is not um is not written in this uh, the css file being generated so the comment is just for the sas file so another type of comment that you can have is this one so to the normal CSS comments okay so you can just say the h1 no there should be h1 elements so that is how you you can see what I have now the h1 element so it is watching this as now if you come here so you see that this this particular comment it reflects in the uh, CSS file generated so it just depends on what you want to do but personally I think I'll go with this one so I'll just take this one out if you want to do multiple line commenting that is when you use this one multi-line commenting that is when you use this one but this is for single line commenting so both of them come in handy but um, let's just move on so the next thing we are going to be talking about is um, variables, SAS variables. So one of the greatest advantages that um, a SAS user would have over a regular CSS user is the ability to declare variables, the ability to easily declare variables. So if you come to the beginning of the file, let me write a comment and call this variables. So these variables, you can do something like um, primary color. If you want to declare a variable, you use this dollar sign. Then you can do something like primary color. You can do something like um, say no. You can do something like let me use a color f f f f f f. f. So this should be for white. But let me just change it. VS Code gives me the luxury. Okay, so let this be my primary color. Now, this is my primary color now. You can see I've declared a variable, but if you check the main.css file, nothing happens. So this primary color that I have over here, this is how I declare the variable. If I want to use the variable, what would I do? Just copy this primary color. Copy. Then bring it here. You say you just then you save it automatically it will save it as your primary color you can see that my um, my program is in throwing up and if you come to the main.css file you can see that there's no variable here obviously there won't be but the background color it is taking the variable that i set as this one so that is how you declare variables in in sas so if i come back here you can see that the background color has changed to the variable that i set let us declare one more variable and call it secondary color secondary color then i can do something like um let me also do f f f f f f then if i come here and make my secondary color maybe something of this sort I don't know why you want to use this color but I'm just using for something for explanation so th for this h1 element let me make it the secondary color that I have over here so don't forget and you have to put your semicolon at the end if not your program will throw up so this secondary color 
don't forget your dollar sign then secondary color you save this and you come here you can see it's taking the secondary color this is not black by the way let us go and verify it if i come to ctrl shift i and i click inspect the elements you can see that it is that secondary color 281818 if i come to the vs code you can see that it is 281818 which is what i set as the secondary color so that is how you that is how you set variables you can also set your variables as um like the numeric values for css for example you can do something like um say um main don't forget that you have to use main font you can do something like um forum main font forum so i believe you know what rem is 4m should be around 64 pixels on most browsers so come here so this h1 you can do something like font size then main font don't forget that you have your dollar sign very important then if i save this come here you can see it is now 4m let me Control shift i back so you can see it is way bigger than it used to be so you can also declare um variables both as strings and numeric values so now let's talk about the nested rules let's talk about nested rules so this is also one of the advantages of css over of scss SAS over the main over the regular CSS. So one of the major reasons why any developer will want to jump on SAS over CSS is that SAS lets you nest CSS selectors the same way you nest HTML elements. So with the knowledge of how you write HTML, you can write your CSS seamlessly by using SAS preprocessor. -pre so let us. I'm going to be writing a navbar. Let's write a simple navbar. So I'm going to be having this div. Let me call. Let me call this one a section. So let me call this one outer container. Okay. So this outer container now. Um, this outer container. If I want to select this outer container regularly using CSS, I'll come here. Then I'll do something like um, dot outer. On the now, okay. So this outer container now inside, I'm going to be having a. Let me say. Let me have another inner container, so I can do div dot inner container. This outer container now. This outer container. Let me say the background color should be. I want the background color to be okay the body of background color is already this one okay let's make it very simple this outer container let it be what we are going to be using so this one um let's have the inner container so this is inner container over here so this outer container now i want the background color to be black so let me come here and create another variable i can do something like um main black then this one don't forget zero 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 so if i come here i'll be having main black okay so the outer container is going to be main black then for this inner container now if i want to select the inner container normally if i want to select it using normal css i can do something like dot outer container then i'll be using the child selector then i'll have um dot inner container so then if i have any other thing that is inside that inner container i'll have to copy the whole of this one and come here then i'll also select that one too but this is all stressful with SCSS, all I have to do to select that inner container is to come here and say dot inner container. Okay, so dot inner container. Now this inner container, I want to give it 
a width of say let me just do one two hundred pixels or let me do 900 pixels now this 900 pixels I want the margin right so margin top and bottom can be zero the margin left and right can be auto because I want it to be centralized so for this one I can do something like anything I write outside this place now we just go to this outer container so I can do something like um, I can say padding so padding top and bottom I can do something like or oh, let me say one rem and um, two rem or oh, let me do 0 0.75 then 1.5 rem if I save this then you come to my CSS now see what I have over here now you can see the outer container then we have outer container inner container so anything you do here basically it will compile it using this SAS compiler then it will generate the main.css um, file so now that I have this one over here let me save what I have here if I should save it then come to the web browser it's not going to be showing anything because um, I didn't set a height I don't want to set a height for this one so for this other one let me put my ul first so this is my unordered list then inside of my unordered list I'll have list items five list items so let this one be home the second one will be about the third one can be blog the fourth one can be new um, team then the fifth one will be contacts normally this these are all supposed to be in anchor links but i'll just leave it like this for now so save this then if i should come here you can see that you can see what i have now you can see what i have the padding is reflecting because there are elements there i think the element should be you can see what i have you can see what i have so to show the this width over here let me do something like um background color equal to let me also use this black but i will use another shade of black so just a bit light shade so so you can see the the portion the 900 pixels you can see the 900 pixels now so let's start styling all these other ones using the nesting rule so using the same nesting rule i have my ul so now don't forget that the ul is inside this inner container so and both the ul and the div is also outside inside this section so i can do something like um, this inner container i can come and style my another list then i will do something like list style type equal to none okay so inside this another list now i can come here since this list items they are children of another list and i can easily select this one so i can just come and say the list items so this list items now i want the color to be white if i should save this one first you come to the main.css file you see what i'm having now i'm having this outer container the inner i'm having the outer container first then i'm having outer container inner container then i'm having outer container inner container ul then the last one is the one with the list items just the same way i'm nesting them over here i think this is top on the list while anyone we want to jump on sas compared to the main uh, regular css so if i come to my web page i think i haven't saved something so okay now the color is white now the color is white so i want them to display in line so i can come here and say display in line in line so if i save this and come here you see they are now displaying in line it's uh, it, it was affecting the height of the um of this section initially so next thing i want is for this another list let me give it some for this one let me give this inner container a padding 
placing a container can give it a pattern of top and bottom say 40 pixels 40 pixels so if i save this no i'm making a mistake you can see that because of the problem i have the SAS compiler is is throwing up it's throwing up so let me close this come here this should be margin so let me say 40 pixels no i want it to be padding rather padding so 40 pixels left and right zero save this then come here you can see the 40 pixels the padding then left and right is zero so the next thing i want to do is to space this so i can actually make this a bit smaller so but my SAS compiler over here so the next thing I might want to do is to this list items let me give them some sort of spacing so I can do something like margin so for the margin top and bottom I don't want it to be anything so the top and bottom I can just say zero so for the left and right for the left and right I might want the pattern the margin to be maybe let's say 20 pixels if I save this you can see the margin you can see the margin the reason why it is reloading automatically is because of this um, go live that I have here so you can see the way this margin command spaces them so let me give it a I want the margin to affect all the elements except the first and the last because this last element too is going to be having the margin right of 20 this uh, first element is going to be having the margin left of 20 i don't want that so how can i do that i can use the pseudo class so i can do something like so if i want to select this this one over here the first one i can do something like the list item you know the list item then i'll do something like first child so for this first child now I can have something like this so for this first child I can say the margin left this may be zero if I should save this you can see my first child the margin left is zero for this last child now I can do something like um, the list item the last child so let me first of all set the background color to be red if I save this so okay the margin right won't be shown here so this one that we want to add we are not we not show directly so but normally to be margin right of what zero so save this so the margin left and the margin right the first and the last item they are not going to be carrying the margin left and the margin right but traditionally everything is going to be having the margin top and bottom of 20 pixels then left and right of 20 pixels of zero top and bottom will be zero then left and right will be 20 pixels so but scss gives you the luxury of instead of writing this um you come under uh, list item then you now write li then you bring in the pseudo class they've absorbed you of that stress so just come here you write your ampersand then you say first child you can see first child so come here and paste it. if you want to select that first child now let me say the color should be green if I save this, you can see that the color of the first child is green to tell you that this this thing I have over here selects the ch first child correctly. So this one, the margin left will be zero. So save this, you can see the margin left is zero. Let me delete this one to show you that that one is working fine. Save this, you can see the margin left is zero. So for the margin right, just do the same thing. Copy, then um this will be right and this is going to be the last child okay so delete this other one so that is it basically that is how you 
you um, do the nesting rule. So you can see the way I have my all the elements in the side in the navbar. You can see how I created this navbar now using SCSS, the nesting rule, the nesting rule. So another thing I can do to make this complete, so I can create a hover state for my list item. So I can just say ampersand again, ampersand, then hover. So I can just say, let me use this background color, this primary color. As, so I can just say color equal to that primary color. But don't forget your dollar sign. Don't forget your dollar sign. So save it. If I hover on it, you can see it is giving me that primary color back. But I don't like the way. So I can just say cursor pointer. Save this and come back here. You can see the cursor is pointer. And if you come to the main CSS file, come to the main.css file, you can see if I start scrolling from the top, let me use Alt Z. So you can see the UL, the list item, you can see the first child, you can see the last child, and you can see the hover state here. So it is every time that you create, you make changes in this CSS and you commit the changes, it will generate the appropriate CSS file for you. So that is how nesting works. That is how nesting works. So we move on to CSS, CSS imports. What SAS does is that it keeps CSS code dry. DRY in programming means don't repeat yourself. You can write small pieces of related code in small files, then import it into the main CSS file. This makes it easier to write organized and reusable codes. So CSS libraries like Material UI, Tailwind, Bootstrap, they use this method to make their code available to developers apart from the use of their content delivery network. So if you want to use all those external, those CSS libraries, like especially Tailwind, they can give you an SCSS file. So you just bring it into your project, then you import it here. So how do you import an SCSS file? Very simple. So I can create another file. Let me create another file and call it, um, say, generic.scss. So inside this generic.scss, I might have something like, um, let me say the body is, let me say the background color is maybe, let me just use a color directly green okay background color is green then let me see the font family the font family let me use lucid sans so i'm using alt z on my vs code to wrap the text then i can add a font size of 2 rem i can add a font size of 2 rem so now that I've saved everything, the way I'm saving it, it is generating a generic .css file for me. But I don't want to generate a generic CSS file. I don't want to. So what I want to do is to import it into my main CSS file. So for this other one, the body that I have, I'll delete it. So let me just comment it out. So you can see that the background color is no longer this primary color. So if the import is working basically, this body will assume the the properties that I defined over here. So how do you import generic into main.css? Come here, come to the top of your document. So come to the top, then you say at imports. So this import, you are not doing a URL. So just come here and say generic. Save this and you can see what I have. So it will automatically detect that you want to bring in an SCSS file. It will automatically detect that you want to bring in an SCSS file. So you can see that everything that I have in generic is what um, it is taking on the page. You can see the font size is now 2 rem. The font size is now 2 rem and the background color is green. So basically that is how you, that is how you do your 
import in SCSS. So let's talk about mixings. Let's talk about mixings. So mixing, a mixing is like a, 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 if you have worked with any server side programming language before, a mixing is like a function. A mixing is like a function. So the mixing directive, it lets you create CSS code that you can reuse throughout the entire website. This will even further reduce the amount of code you have to write since you don't have to write all this code over and over and over again. So let me give you an example of a mixing. Normally, I will advise you that if you want to write a mixing, you should write the mixing on top of your your code. You write it on top of your code. So any mixings that you want to write, after doing all the import you want, you come and create all the variables that you want to create. Then I'll advise you that after writing out your variables, you come and start writing your mixings. So hope the ice cream seller's audio is not entering this thing. I'm very sorry about that. So let's write a simple mixing. So you can do something like um at menu item menu item so for this menu item now no you're going to be i made a mistake i should be at mixing then after writing at mixing you're going to be writing menu item or let, let me put font font style Okay, menu item font style. So I can do something like the color should be, um, say, the color should be maybe black. Let me use black. So, main black. Now you can see that you can see one of the reasons why I'm asking, I am suggesting to you that you write your mixings after your variables. It is because your variables can come in handy while writing your mixings. Let me increase this thing. Your variables, they can come in handy while writing your mixings. So menu item font style. So color main black. Then I can do something like the font size. Let me do something like um, 0 0.85 rem. I love to use rem. Then after that one, you can do something like font weight. Let's call this one bold. Then let's see. Um, okay, let's leave it for now. Let's just leave it for now. So, if I should save this, you can see the way I have my mixing over here. If you check the main CSS file, you will not see any mixing inside. You will not. CSS doesn't even have um, mixing. I mean the regular CSS. So this mixing that I have over here, just like your server-side programming language, where you have function definition and function call, I'm having my mixing definition here, my mixing definition. So how can this come in handy while writing, while, how can you, you have defined it over here now, how can you use it, how can you call it? Very simple. So if you come to this list item that I have over here, if you come to this list item, I can take away this color. I don't need it. So I will just come here and do something like at include. Then I'll now write the name of my mixing, which is menu item font style. Menu item font style. So come here at include that mixing. If I save this and I save it. So you can see what I have over here now. The home, uh, the the menu items, the color is now black and you can see that it is retaining the hover state with the color that I set initially, which is this one, and the cursor is pointer obviously. And you can see the, the reduction in the font. Let us check the CSS file. This is the CSS file over here. So um, the list item, you can see the list item over here. You can see the display inline first. Let me, you can see the display inline. The margin 0, 20 pixels. You can see the margin is 0, 20 pixels. Then we have the color, the font size, and the font width. This color, font size, and font width is coming from this menu item font style, which is coming from this mixing that I have over here. Just coming from this mixing that I have over here. So that is that is it basically. So also a mixing can include other mixings too. A mixing can include other mixings too. But I'll just leave this for now.
then you can also pass a variable into a mixing you can pass a variable into a mixing for example this place where we are defining our mixings we can do something like um say um let me define a variable color and weight So you can see that I'm, I want to declare to have added to um, I want to pass in two variables into my mixing color and weight. So instead of having this color to be color, I'll just come here and say color. Then instead of this one, I can just come here and say weight. So no, this one we have the dollar sign too. So now if I want to call this one, you can see that I'm having an error because I'm supposed to be passing in values into my mixing, but I'm not passing it. You can see, you can see missing argument color. It's also missing weight, but color is what it detected first. How can you correct it? Very simple. Come to the place where you have, where I have called it over here. So I'm supposed to pass in color and weight. You can see it is already giving me this is one of the reasons why I will advise you to use VS Code. It is already giving me no, the notification that it, is, it, it, it needs color and weight. So which color? I can decide to do something like red. What is the weight going to be? I can say um, normal. Let the weight be normal. So you can see the uh, color and the weight. If I save this, you can see the weight is no longer bold and the color is now red. So that is me passing in values into my mixing. So if I come here and say bold, and I say the background color should be green. Save this. Come here, you can see, you can see. So that is how you can pass in um, values into your mixing. Then you can also have default values for your mixings. You can also have default values for your mixing such that if you don't pass in any value into the mixing, it will just assume the default values. For example, see what we did over here for my mixing, color and weight. I can do something like color equal to, um, let me see, color equal to this color that I have over here. So I can say, the color equal to this main black. No, it should be color equal to the main black. Then for this weight now, I can do something like weight maybe bold by default. So let me come here and remove the green and the bold save this you can see that my my scss isn't shouting come here you can see the font weight is bold and the color is assuming this default that i set color is main black so i'm even using uh, the variables declared in scss as a default variable that i want to pass into a mixing so possibilities are endless possibilities are endless so one other thing that you can do with your sas is to pass in content into your mixing and this comes in very handy it comes in very handy especially when you are writing what i've used this for extensively is to write media queries and we know that in regular css media queries is what you use to define the outward appearance of your website on different um, screen sizes for example the mobile the laptop the tablet and the bigger screens so how can you use mixings to write um, the media queries very simple come here and do something like this let me define a variable and call that variable I can do something like breakpoints mobile okay so come here and refer to this as maybe 480 pixels 480 pixels so now I have a variable breakpoint mobile which is 480 pixels. So how can I use this in my to write a media query? So just come here at mixing. Then you can say you can do something like um mobile mobile view. Okay. So this mobile view now 
in regular CSS, if you want to write a media query, you just bring in at media, then screen, you write the rule, then you start writing the properties inside of your curly braces. But here, you can do something like at media, then you can do something like um, max width, then max width break point mobile then you now start writing your content you now do something like at content so the way you want to write your whatever you want to write in your media query is what you're going to be writing in this content area now so if i should save this you can see that i'm having this success over here meaning that my program isn't trained up yet so how can I use this uh, media query now? Very simple. All I have to do is to come to this body over here. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, let me see on screens that are less than 480 pixels. Um, I want this list item to display as block. So let me just use that, something simple. So I can just do something like at include then the name of my mixing what is the name of my mixing mobile view then you say mobile view okay now you start writing the properties for mobile view and this is display inline i want it to display block so display block so save this you can see that I'm still having success here. It's not shouting. So how can I test for this? If you come to this main.css, you will see you can see at media max width 480 pixels. You can see outer container, inner container, on other list. Then the list item itself will display as block. You can see the way mixing is helping me to write my media query now. So come here, control shift IA. Then let me just come to um let me say 450 so you can see that it is displaying as block now it is no longer displaying as uh, inline so if i should go above 480 you can see go above 480 come back below 480 go above 480 then you come back below 480 you can see that the media query is working so that is how you use that is how you use um mixings to write media queries So the last thing that we're going to be talking about is extend, extend, SAS extend. So extend, the extend directive helps you to share styling between elements if they are similar or they share the same CSS properties. So if you have two elements, you can easily use your SAS extend to share their styling. For example, let me come here and um, I'm going to be creating two buttons. So let me come after section, let me create two buttons. Let me say button, no, or let me just use links instead. A multiplied by three. So for this first anchor link, it is going to be a generic anchor link. So let me say this one is generic. Then this one is going to be primary. Then this one is going to be secondary. So for this, let's all of them, let me just use this placeholder for their link. That is not what I'm after. So, okay. So open this one. Then let me add an ID. ID, let me say main. Then let this ID be AUX1. Then this second one will be AUX2. Okay, so if I save them and I come back to my code over here, my screen rather, so you can see generic primary and secondary. So come here and now let us start styling them. Let us start styling them. Let me do alt switch so I can see main ox, ox1 and ox2. So this is the main, this is auxiliary one, then this is auxiliary two. So 
to make it easier for us to traverse let me add a break point line break rather so br okay save this and you see generic primary and secondary now let us start styling them i want to give room more room for styling so you can see my main css file for now come here and okay let me wrap the whole of this inside a div and call that div btn container okay so let me open up this a bit then the whole of this tree i will put it inside that btn container so i can use nesting to do everything close this one now let us start working on it so this outer container let me close it so this is this btn container that i want to work on now so you can do something like div.btn container i have successfully selected this outer container so this is valid in css this is valid in css so i can just open this i'm come down so i don't want anything for this outer container so i can just leave it like that so come and start the main one main button so for this main button don't forget your id selector main okay so for this main button i can do something like font size is maybe um 16 pixels if i save this you can see the generic then after font size is 16 pixels I can do something like font um, let me say padding is 8 pixels then 16 pixels background color is maybe white then border can be maybe one pixel solid then black then border radius is four pixels save this and you can see what i have now but my border radius isn't showing okay this should be border radius save this so my border radius is showing now for this div main container let me add the margin left so it will push it from the end of the page so margin left so this margin left i can have something like um 30 pixels just to push it away from exactly so okay so the border radius is 4 pixels let me say text decoration text decoration of none then after te text decoration of none I can have um, save this first then let me change the color to black as well let me just use black for now then save it so i don't know let me do font weight bold save this so you can see that the font weight is bold now then for this border let me do two pixels i want the button to shout okay so you see the way this button is now you can see the way this button is now now if i want to extend the style throughout the primary and the secondary I can do something like um don't forget that this one is ox one so come here at extend at extend then you can do something like main and save it i'm making a mistake here sorry so I'm supposed to first of all do ox one. I want to extend the classes of this main. I want to extend it to ox one. So I can just ox one. Just the same way we have been nesting it since. Then you do extend you bring up the extend directive extend yes then main save it so you can see now that the properties of generic have been extended to primary so if i want to change one or two 
properties in primary I can just do something like um color or oh, let me define let me do something like um an auxiliary color okay so this auxiliary color I can do something like um say red let me still use red I don't know red has gotten into my hands then come here you can do something like the auxiliary no the color equal to the auxiliary color if I save this you can see that even though I extended main to this aux one over here which is the second button I can easily change the color because if I should remove this one it is going to be taking the color of the parent element well the parent star rather so so moving forward I have color I have aux color another thing I might want to do is to change the um let me see the border so I can do something like border color I can just say border color box color save so you can see the border and this other one so what if I want to what if I want to extend this generic to the secondary very simple just come here ox 2 after this ox 2 then at extend don't forget you're extending main then you close it using your semicolon if I save this first you can see the secondary is taking the styling of generic then you can do something like background color of yellow save so you can see that the background color is yellow and the color itself is black the color of the text is black and the background color too is black so that is how you use um, extend so well this will be the end of the road for SCSS Thank you very much for staying till the end. So don't forget to like the video and you can also support the channel by subscribing and sharing the video with your with anyone that you know might need it. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.